Oh my f that could have been bad. Welcome back to the shop, you wrench warriors. Today we've got the Harbor Freight Torque Wrenches. Now these are the cheapest ones they sell. They're each $19.99. Today we're gonna answer the question, do you need to spend more money or will these do the job? We'll take a look at their physical construction, we'll put them through some tests, and we'll find out if you just saved a bunch of money or if you're about to break a bolt off in your engine block and ruin your whole damn day. Let's start with the 3H drive torque wrench first. It comes with this nice little case here and a little manual. Let's take a look at this case here. It's all plastic latches and a living hinge here. So this hinge is made of plastic. And if you open and close this all the time, that hinge will break on you. Now the other option is you could take a razor blade, cut it here and just use the bottom half in your toolbox, your roll cart, and have a nice little place to store the torque wrench. So let's take a look at the wrench itself. 3H drive. Let's listen to it. It's not a super fine paw, but it should be all right. It is reversible, but that doesn't do you a whole lot of good because you should not be loosening things. It says in the manual not to loosen it, any fasteners with it, or you can damage the wrench. So we'll go back to tighten. Now let's take a look at your adjustment mechanism. Before you do any adjustment, you got to release the center knob. We'll back it off all the way. So each of these lines here represent a torque. So here's five foot pounds up to 80 foot pounds. And when we get to the first line and we line with zero, now we're at five foot pounds. That's five and a half, that's six. If we go all the way to zero again, now we're at 10 and so on and so forth up until 80 foot pounds. So this one has a range of five to 80 foot pounds. Once you make your adjustment, you can lock in the center knob and that's gonna prevent it from changing on you while you're working on the project. And it says it has an accuracy of plus or minus 4%. So we'll check that a little bit later. All right, now let's take a look at the half inch drive. Half inch drive comes in the exact same case, so we won't go over that. Let's take a look here. Same thing, except for you have a half inch drive. Let's take a listen. That one almost seemed to be stuck. Very coarse pawls. Reversible again, but the manual on this one also says not to loosen anything. So leave it on tighten. Come down here and this thing adjusts in the exact same way, except for our range is between 10 and 150 foot pounds of torque. And it's much longer, you get a lot more leverage. And plus or minus 4% as well. All right, something I wanted to mention real quick is here on the 3H drive, if you wanted to get a better one over at Harbor Freight, this one's 20 bucks. The Icon is 100 bucks. That's a huge step up. So the Icon would have to be considerably better than this one. And the Quinn, which is their electronic one, is 160 bucks. Now, if we look over at the, the half inch drive, this one's 20 bucks. The Icon is 120 bucks and the Quinn is 170. So today we need to find out, is it worth spending all this extra money? Let's talk about a quick and dirty sanity check. You can do it home. Let's say you pull this out of the drawer and, you, and uh, you don't really know if it's working anymore. We'll take the flats of this and we'll put them in this vise. Be careful not to crush this ball. So we're gonna clamp down on the other two sides. All right, I've dialed it into 20 foot pounds. And let's just make sure it's working. Seems to be working. Now notice the head flexes relative to the body. And listen to that click. Now also, as part of your quick and dirty check is make sure that feels like about 20 pounds. This is almost a foot from here to here. Feels about right. We'll test it more accurately in a minute. Now let's check the half inch drive. Again, I'm gonna avoid crushing the ball. Don't go crushing balls and vices. It's not a good idea. Okay. Now I've got this one set on 30 foot pounds. This looks like about a foot and a half to me. So it should also feel about like 20 pounds of force. Let's listen. All 
All right, it seems to be functioning. It feels a little bit heavier than the other one, but we'll check it more accurately in a second. That's why they're called click type torque wrenches, is you're listening for that clunk, that click. Now let's see how accurate they are. For our test here, we're gonna take this old cracked Craftsman socket, 17 millimeter, one of the good ones too, made in the USA. This thing was actually cracked when I bought the set years and years ago, never bothered to trade it in. Now let's weld it to this angle iron here so that we can clamp it up in the vise. All right, there's our socket welded to our piece of angle iron. All right, while we're waiting for that to cool, let's work on the rest of the project. Got a piece of PVC here. Okay, we're just gonna take this twine here. It's pretty damn strong. Put it through this pipe. And we're just gonna tie the other end here into a knot. Here's how we're gonna run our test. Let's start with the 3 8 drive and plug it into this little adapter, make it half inch. We're gonna plug that right into here. And we're gonna use the ratchet to make it approximately horizontal. So what we need to do here is to get foot pounds of torque. That one foot pound would mean one foot pushing down at one pound from the pivot point. So let's go ahead and measure. And let's get one, one foot. Okay, one foot falls right here on the handle. So that's where we're gonna apply our pressure. All right, since we're all working out at home, we got plenty of weight plates. And I've weighed them and they're all very accurate actually. So we have our little string and tube here. This is of negligible weight. Let's take 10 pound plate, feed it onto our string. And let's go ahead and set it at our one pound mark. You see how it clicked? Okay. Oh my f that could have been bad. All right, we need to use a stronger string. There's the PVC pipe there at the bottom. That would have been my foot if I hadn't have done the splits real quick. And the wrench almost caught me right in the face. Don't do stupid stuff like that. What a moron. You guys remember making those popcorn necklaces during Christmas? Or those, pop, those stringed popcorn, whatever. This reminds me of that. All right, let's start our testing with the 3 8 drive torque wrench. We've got a little adapter here that takes the 3 8 to half inch. Plug that in. Pop our wrench in. Pretty good there. Yeah, right here in the manual. Before every use, exercise torque wrench. Loosen lock knob, then perform the following exercise three times. Turn knurled handle to the right until maximum torque setting is reached. Turn to the left until minimum torque setting is reached. So we just cycled it three times. Let's set it at the lowest torque. Okay, there's five. And let's graduate the handle. Because here's nine inches, 10 inches, 11 inches, then 12 inches is this silver band here. All right, so we've got it set for five foot pounds. And um, we know this is one foot, we measured it. So let's go ahead and put that on there. See what we get. Okay, we're triggering it. That's at 12 inches. Let's go to 11 inches. Still triggering it. Let's go 10 inches. Still triggering it. Let's go to nine inches. Still triggering it. Let's add a couple more graduations. Let's go to eight. Still triggering. Seven. Okay. Okay, so we're, since we're triggering at eight inches instead of 12 inches, we can figure out, 
you can go 8 divided by 12 is 66% is what it's triggering at. Let's times that by our uh, weight. So it's actually triggering at 3.33 pounds. So if we take 8 divided by 12, there's our 66%. Let's subtract 1. We're off by 33%. Okay, let's go up another setting. So let's go ahead and throw it on the one foot. We've got a trigger. Let's throw it on the nine. Got a trigger at nine. No trigger at eight. Okay, so now we're nine over 12 in accuracy. Let's go ahead and check that out. Nine divided by 12. Let's go from 10 to 20. Okay, now let's re-graduate the handle since as we turn the handle and it's moving closer. Okay, we got 20 pounds. Let's put it on the one foot mark. Okay, you got a trigger, 11 inch. Trigger, 10 inch. Trigger on a 10, go to nine. No trigger on the nine. Nine and a half, nine and three quarters. Okay, let's call that a 10. It says 10 over 12, 10 divided by 12, 83% accurate. All right, let's go to 40 pounds. Okay, we got 40 pounds. Let's drop it right on 12 inches. Got a trigger, 11 inches. Trigger, 10 inches. No trigger at 10. Let's go to 10 and a half. No trigger at 10 and a half. Let's go back to 11. Let's go right up to its maximum, 80 foot pounds. Okay, we've got 80, 80 pounds. Drop it on the end here. Nice loud click. Okay, let's uh, move it to 11. No click. Let's go to 11 and a half. Okay, so here's our results on the 3 8 wrench. You can see it's off more, the lower weight you set. We got five through 80 pounds here. And as we got closer to its higher rating, we got a lot closer, all the way to 4%, which is actually within its specifications. Our worst was 33% and it gets better as we go along. Okay, so that's the 3 8 wrench. Let's hope the half inch does better. Let's try it. All right, let's take our half inch wrench, stick it in our little test stand. Now let's set it for its lowest torque setting, which is 10 pounds. Let's graduate the handle. Okay, we got 10 pounds on the rig. Let's put her at one, one foot. Okay, not triggering. Let's go beyond one foot. 13 inches. 12 and a half inches. Okay, so it takes 12 and a half inches to set this one off. Set it for 20. Okay, let's try dropping it on 12. We've got a trigger at 12. Let's try so 11, no trigger, 11 and a half, trigger. Set it to 40. Okay, got 40 pounds on the rig. Just drop it on one foot. Trigger's at one foot. Let's go to 11. 
No trigger at 11. Let's go to 11 and a half. No trigger at 11 and a half. Triggers at 11 and three quarters. Let's go up to 80. Okay, it went off at about 12 and a quarter inches. Finally, let's set this one for 100 pounds because that's how much weight I have handy. Put it right at one foot. Not quite a trigger. Okay, so we'll call that uh, 12 and a half. All right, let's go over the results real quick. On the 3 8 you can see that we were on the low end, we were 33% off at five foot pounds. And at the high end, we were 4% uh, off at 80 foot pounds. So it actually got better as we got higher. Now, if we go to the half inch, we see that we were 4% off at the most ever, which is, means it's within spec. In conclusion, I would use it on my, I'd use both of these on my lawnmower, no problem at all. Would I use them on my jet skis? Yeah, probably. You know, this one right here, maybe not. This one I definitely would. Would I use them on my truck? Again, I'd use this one, probably not this one. Would I use them on my airplane? Hell no, I wouldn't use them on my airplane. I'd buy better ones. They've shown, what I worry about is from here to here, the inconsistency. And if you buy these, your small one might be accurate, your big one might be off. So what I would do with these and any other torque wrench you're using in a critical way is I would do this simple test. This is pretty accurate. And just make sure it's within the ballpark. You know, if, if you're off by 20 or 30%, like this 3 8 one, don't use it, you know, take it back and get one that's closer, you know. At the very least, if you're not gonna do the test, buy one from probably a little bit more reputable manufacturer. All right, you guys, if you found that interesting and you liked seeing me almost get clobbered in the face by breaking that twine, uh, like and subscribe. I'm sure I'll get hurt in some future project. I'll see you guys later.